Hey everybody, Eric here. And this week's Beyond SketchUp, we're going to take a look at some extensions, but not just any extensions, my top five picks for doing site analysis for landscape architecture here in SketchUp. So just real quick, before I get into it, I just want to say that while I love modeling my designs in SketchUp, I also love having some information that's going to help me with or inform my designs before I get too far. So that's the purpose of site analysis. It's basically to say, what about this property or what about where this property is located is going to help influence the design decisions that I make. And for landscape architecture, that's really important. The two things that I think that I like to or try to bring into the site analysis process is the sun and the slope, because we know that the sun and shade will impact everything from whether we need shade structures to our plant palette choices. And the slope, of course, is going to determine whether we need to grade things or we need to stay away from certain areas and, of course, where things like drainage goes. So to me, those are two really important things. And let's just jump right into some extensions that are going to help that process run a little more quickly and smoothly. I've got my site here. My site is just kind of an abstract site. It's not a real property, just for this demo. Um, I want to start with sun, and then I want to move to slope. So for sun, I have two extensions I want to show you now. If I turn my shadows on and kind of play with the time of day, you can see that just by default with SketchUp's shadow settings, we can change the time of day and the season. Now that's really helpful because that can tell you again, okay, this is where the sun's going to be at this time. But then I have to move it to another time, and then I have to see what that looks like at that time. And, you know, there's a little bit more information I would like to get beyond that. So the first one I want to look at is called, it's Curic Sun. So I can just come over here to Tools, Curic Sun, and in this case, I want to say Show Sun. So what it's going to do is it's going to show me the sun. If I zoom out here, and I can just click off of this, it's going to actually show me the sun path. Now, I want to make a note here that it's important that you geolocate your model first. So come over here, geolocation, add a location. You want to make sure you do that first because this sun path is going to be specific to your latitude and longitude, and it's not going to be the same for everywhere in the world. So once you've done that, you can see here, if you look at the shadows down here, if I click anywhere within the sun path, not only does the sun position change, because it's changing both time of day. So time of day starts over here. If you think about it, the sun rises in the east, sets in the west. So if I wanted to say sunrise during the summer, I would come up onto this top bar. That's the summer solstice. And so sunrise during the summer, that's what it's going to do for my shadow. And if I came over here and said, well, what about noon during the winter solstice? I could click somewhere around here. I'm just kind of eyeballing it at this point. And then I can see that's what noon during the winter solstice looks like. So again, What's really powerful about this is not only a quick way to set the shadows and move them around to see what different times of day and times of year look like visually, but if I wanted to, I could come over here, switch to plan view. And for this, I can just do a screenshot and then either go to layout or go to illustrator or something like that. And I could sort of trace this and create basically a sun and shade diagram. So there's more to say about that, but I want to move on because that's sort of talking about the sun aspect of things. So Keurig Sun is really kind of cool for visualizing that sun and being able to quickly sort of move it and place it. But what about the shadows? So this one is I want to capture this shadow, for example, at a few different times of day. And I want to see where those shadows overlap, because what that'll do is it'll tell me that wherever the shadows overlap, I will not get sun in that spot. So in my shadow settings, I'm going to start, I'm at 12 noon, and I'm at the, not the solstice, but I'm actually at the equinox, so that's great. And I'm going to come up here to my next extension. This one's called TIG Shadow Projector. So if I come over here and say New Shadow Projection, I can choose some options. Do I want lines, faces, faces, and edges? Let's do that and click OK. And there it is. So that's basically my shadow. It's actual geometry now. So if I move this, I can move the shadow now independently. So if I turn the shadows off, you can see it's still there. Now that's cool because I'm going to switch this over to 9 a.m. 
So now this is what the shadow is doing in the morning. I can just grab my plane. Sorry, I forgot to, to say that you need a plane to cast the shadow on. So that's why I selected this ground plane first. So that's why we're going to do this twice. Come over here now down to TIG Shadow Projector again. New Shadow Projection. Same settings. And there it is. Now, I'm going to really quickly pull the materials out from this because I want to show you something one step sort of further. So not only do I have these shadows, if I turn my shadows off, you can see I have geometry for two different times of day. What I would like to do is paint one one color and I'm making it 50% opacity. And I want to paint the other, say noon, a different color. So what that means is where they come together is where no sun will be. So if I even just say pull that off to the side, I'm going to pull this off to the side and I'm going to explode these. And again, if I wanted just to paint this a different color, just so it's a little bit more obvious, this area here, if I switch to plan view, this is my 9 a.m., this is my noon, and this area in between that I have actual geometry for, if I wanted to, I could pull the square footage of this. This is um, all, nearly 1,500 square foot of my backyard will be in the shade all day long during the equinox. So that's useful information. So when I do my design, I just have to take that into consideration. So I'm going to go ahead and stop, or I'm going to pause my sun analysis there. And I want to move over to the second half of my extension review, which is the slope analysis. So let me pop over to my slope scene. I have a slope here already. I have my property line. So if I zoom in, you can see my dashed property line. And I want to figure out where to place this building, or maybe not this building, but maybe a different building. I just want to sort of understand this slope a little bit and find out what, um, what can the slope tell me about the site. Right now, if you look at it, it, I can tell, of course, if I tilt this way, I can see that, yes, this is high and this is low. If I go into plan view, it's a little bit harder to tell. I can see some shadows because I can change my shadow settings. Of course, depending on the time of day, that sh those shadows um, may not be there. So I don't really want to rely on my shadow settings to read the slope because it's, it's going to be different during different times of day. So instead, I want to, first thing I want to do is I'm going to make a copy of that. No, I'll make a copy of it in a second. That's all right. I'll just do the first one. So my next extension, and it's actually one extension, but I'm going to do two parts of it. And it's called Fredo Tools. So a lot of you know Fredo or Fredo 6 makes some really, really powerful extensions. And this one's called Fredo Tools. It's just a collection of just general use ones that are helpful. And there's two in here that I want to focus on. And one is color by altitude, and one is color by slope. So starting with color by altitude, it's going to tell me I could change the colors here if I wanted to, like if I wanted to pick you know, a brighter purple color or a blue or something like that. Basically, I can change the colors to anything I want, or I can just pick one from a predetermined list. What I want to do is I want to know what is high and what is low. So from here, there's some other options, but I tend with Fredo's tools, I tend to stick with just sort of the defaults because they're pretty complex and I don't like to think too hard about it. So I'm just going to click Apply. And then what that does now is if I go to my plan view again, so I'm going to pop over to plan view. Now I know that my this is high, so purple, if I have a legend, purple being highest and yellow being lowest, or white in this case representing flat, then all of a sudden I can do a, if I send this to layout or if my shadow settings like here, if I had, you know, if I had no shadows at all, it wouldn't matter. I don't need those for the slope anymore because now I have the slope itself is colored. It's telling me this is pretty high. So maybe you want to stay in this sort of lower valley area when I'm sort of working in plan view or when I'm communicating in plan view to maybe a consultant or um, somebody I'm collaborating with. I want to make a copy of that. I'm going to again, I'm going to use my other extension, which I'm not, which is not part of this um, tutorial. And I'm going to remove the color from the second one, because what we're going to do is I want to use that same slope and I want to do this again. 
So from here, I'm going to come, I'm going to select this. I'm going to go tools, Fredo tools. In this game, I'm, this time I'm going to say color by slope, not color by altitude. So color by slope is going to tell me what of this terrain is of what slope percentage. This is really, really important because there's some things like 30, anything above 30% may be something where I don't want to build on because it's more expensive or it's just going to be difficult or it's just not really good for the environment to do a lot of grading. So in this case, what I want to do is I want to say, I want to know kind of what is sort of 10, which is where I want to be, and then what is sort of 30 and above, which is kind of what I want to avoid. And you can go as many as you want. You can go 10, 30, anything above 50. Set the colors that you want. You can choose to show the area, so it'll do the calcs for you, which is really nice. So I'm just going to go ahead and click OK and see what that does. And that's my slope analysis. So this one tells me the height, and this one tells me the percentage. So basically, anything red or orange, I want to avoid. I want to avoid, well, I don't want to avoid, but I want to avoid maybe putting my, my structure or something like that on. What's really handy here is it already calcs all this for you. So you can just take that information, go plug it into a spreadsheet, or export it and put it in your document or whatever it is that you're, you're doing the analysis. So if I switch back to plan view, you can see I have slope by height and slope by, um, by percentage. Really, really cool stuff. Now, I'm going to end here. That was, um, that was technically three extensions because Fredo Tools is really a collection of extensions. But I want to... I'm going to count that as four. And then I want to wrap up on my fifth extension, which is TIG Contour Maker. And I'll tell you why, because sometimes when I draw over a project, I may want to see the slope colors, but I may not want to see it all the time. So in this case, what I do is I go over here to my hidden line style, but then I lose a lot of information. So what I want to do is come back and add some information about the slope, but using line work instead of color. So come over to Extensions this time instead of Tools, Contours. It's going to ask me the contour spacing, so I could type in 5 foot if I wanted to, or 10 foot contours, and click OK. And there they are, right there. If you have a flat area, it doesn't really know what to do with flat areas, so you're going to see that geometry. Just go ahead and get rid of that. It's also handy that it puts it on its own layer. It's called Contour, and it gives it a number. So I could just switch this to a dashed line if I wanted to, just to sort of make that a little bit more apparent that those are my contours. And I'm going to do that one more time in case that was quick. And I'm going to change the contour interval. I'm going to go extensions, come down here to contours. And this time I'm going to type in one foot so you can see the difference. It might take a little bit longer if you, if you have a really complex slope or you have a really big area. You may want to kind of think about increasing your contour interval or maybe doing it in, in smaller sections. So just you know something to think about if you've got a really, really big area. This puts it on a different tag, which is great. So you can actually have your 10 foots and your 1 foots or your 5 foots and your 1 foots. So you can go through and toggle uh, between those if you wanted to. I'm showing them on separate terrains, but obviously you'd want to do that with your own model. And then when I switch back to plan view, you can see in plan view, I have my contours. It's going to tell me a lot about my site, about where it's going to drain, about where my low parts are, about where my really steep parts are. So it's another way to look at the site. And lastly, I'm going to wrap up by saying that you can combine these two. So if I go back to my shaded with textures, I can take my contour lines and I can show them on top of my slope so that I can kind of get a better sense of what the topography is doing. And of course, what percentage range that works within. So I'm going to sort of tilt my view so I can get something cool in my background. And I'm going to wrap up there. I know that was quick. I know that was a lot of information, but that's kind of what I do. These beyond SketchUp uh, are supposed to expose you to new ideas, new extensions, new tools, and new things that you can try and experiment with with your own workflow. So hopefully you learned at least one new thing today. Um, and let us know either way in the comments below. We read those comments. I'll respond to them. If you've got uh, an extension that you absolutely love that I didn't cover here, go ahead and pop it in there for everyone's uses. And speaking of which, I'm also going to put the links to these extensions in the description below as well. So if any of these you don't have or you're curious about and want to try yourself, I'll go ahead and make sure to get those over to you. So 
Beyond commenting, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe so that you can get all the latest videos every single week delivered right to your inbox. I'll leave you on that note. Thanks and see you next time.